The Ancient Egyptians Long ago, people turned to myths and legends if they were sick. They believed that disease was caused by bad spirits or spiritual beings. The cure was often to get rid of the disease using spells, prayers to the gods, or magic potions. These were thought to away the bad spirits inside. The ancient Egyptians believed in an afterlife, which was like a second life, a time when the spirit lived after death. As part of this, they believed that it was important to preserve the body well. Even though the spirit left the body, it needed to return to the body from time to time. The body was washed, and some of the internal organs were removed. Then the body was dried, bathed in oils, and wrapped. Hippocrates, 460 to 370 BC. Hippocrates, an ancient Greek physician, is often called the father of medicine. He was admired as a doctor and a teacher. He believed the work of the doctor and the work of the priest should be kept separate. He also believed that all disease has a natural cause, not a spiritual one. Because Hippocrates was admired by so many people, it is hard to know what is true about his life. We have about 60 medical texts with his name on them, but most of them were not written by him. He is credited with the Hippocratic Oath, which doctors still use today. However, he probably did not write it. A healthy mind is a healthy body. The ancient Romans are known for their huge cities, wonderful art, and the development of democracy, among many other things. Few people know, however, that the Romans were among the first to believe that being clean is good for our health. They were the first civilization to set up a public health system to benefit the whole population. The Romans realized that we could become sick from unclean kitchens dirty toilets, and from drinking bad water. So, they brought fresh water into the cities by pipes and aqueducts. They built public baths where people could wash. They put toilets in their homes. The Greek physician, Galen, who lived in Rome for a few years, was one of the first to study the human body in detail. He described the organs of the body, such as the heart, stomach, and brain. He, like Hippocrates, believed that there were four major systems in the body. Blood, Galen thought, was the most important one. Bloodletting started with the ancient Egyptians, but because of Galen's theories, it became a very common treatment. He believed that by cutting the body to let out blood, the disease was also being let out. Periclesis, 1493 to 1541. As Hippocrates is called the father of medicine, so Periclesis is called the father of modern medicine. Periclesis united medicine and chemistry. He made and used treatments containing chemical compounds. Periclesis also rejected the idea that religious teachings could cure people of illnesses. For many years, he traveled a lot. Everywhere he went, he learned from the people. He believed that experience was knowledge, and that he could learn from old wives, gypsies, etc., not just scholars. Periclesis looked for causes of diseases. He knew that goiter was connected to minerals, especially lead, in drinking water. He also understood that miners got sick from the air they breathed. He treated and cured many diseases. Andreas Vesalius, 1514 to 1564. Andreas Vesalius wrote the first in-depth anatomy textbook with illustrations. This book broke new ground in our knowledge of the human body and its organs and led to a new science, anatomy. He understood that the body was made of different organs which were connected into a system. The Scientific Method 
The scientific method was developed slowly, over thousands of years. With this method, scientists made observations about the natural world and used their background knowledge to predict why these things happened. They then gathered information to test these predictions and changed their original ideas based on the new information. In 1660, the Royal Society in London was created. It was a place where scientists could exchange information and learn from each other. The society had a panel of experts to give advice and guidance. Seeing Cells for the First Time The invention of the microscope by Zacharias Jensen in the 1590s allowed scientists to see objects greatly enlarged. A new microscope by Antoni van Leeuwenhoek, 1632-1723, could see things like cells 270 times larger than in real life. He made hundreds of scientific discoveries that helped us understand the human body and nature at the smallest level. He developed a new scientific field called microbiology. Edward Jenner, 1749-1823 Edward Jenner developed the first vaccine. It was for smallpox. During Jenner's lifetime, smallpox killed many people and it scarred those who survived it. Jenner was a country doctor. Where he lived, the milkmaids never caught smallpox. However, they did catch cowpox, a minor disease, from the cows they worked with. Jenner guessed that cowpox and smallpox were related. His theory was that getting cowpox gave the milkmaids immunity to smallpox. He tested his theory, and it was correct. By 1853, the smallpox vaccine was required for all babies in England and Wales. The Development of Hospitals Once people began to understand more about diseases and how they are transferred from one person to the next, they realized that hospitals had to be redesigned. Patients were now separated into wards or special rooms dealing with different diseases. Hospitals became more systematic and kept records of the patients and their diseases. In this way, doctors could discover patterns of infections. Germs and Bacteria In the 1830s in Italy, Agostino Bassi discovered that there were good and bad bacteria. In 1846, Dr. Ignaz Semmelweis found that doctors who disinfected their hands reduced the number of deaths and diseases in their patients. Later, Joseph Lister told surgeons to wear clean gloves, disinfect their hands before and after surgery, and disinfect their surgical instruments. Medicine and surgery were forever changed. Pasteur and Koch In the late 19th century, Robert Koch, 1843-1910, and Louis Pasteur, 1822-1895, worked as rivals, but made very important discoveries about microbiology. Pasteur discovered that microorganisms did not grow in closed or extremely clean containers. He also learned that if we cook certain foods at a high temperature, they will be safe to eat for a long time. Koch developed a method for discovering which specific germ caused an infection. He also stained and photographed germs so people could see them for the first time. Today, for much of human history, humans only lived to be 30 or 40 years old. Today, most of us live into our 80s or 90s. The next time you visit a doctor, remember that their knowledge has taken thousands of years to develop. We should all be thankful to the men and women of the past who have taught us so much. Our quality of life and length of life have improved greatly. <laughs>